In this lesson, you'll learn how to define questions, answers, colloquy, and bylines. In the last lesson, you learned how to define untranslates and mistranslates by positioning the cursor on the item to be defined, marking the steno or text, selecting the define type, typing the text, and then pressing enter to complete the define. Almost all of the steps are the same for defining questions, answers, colloquy, and bylines. The only thing that will be different is what to type after you've selected the define type. Let's begin by following the steps which are the same. First, we'll position the cursor on the untranslate by pressing F8 to scan forward. As there's only one stroke, there's no need to mark the steno. The next step is to select the type of define. This is steno for a question, and questions can occur in any job. They're not specific to any one job or case, so all questions should be D-defined. I'll press Control D. Now, if I were defining a word or phrase, I would type that word or phrase. But what do I type for a question? If you were to define the steno for a question just as a Q or a Q period, you'd just see something like this. And obviously, that's not right. When you write steno for a question, what you want is for Catalyst to start the text on a new line, insert a Q or Q period symbol at the appropriate position, indent the first line of text, have the text wrapped to the correct margins, and if you don't write punctuation at the end of the paragraph, you'd probably like a question mark added at the end of every question. Catalyst will do all of that when you define Steno as a format symbol. A format symbol is a command that dictates how text should be formatted. The shortcut key for inserting a format symbol is F4. After you press F4, you'll press a shortcut letter that tells Catalyst what type of formatting you want. The shortcut character for a question is Q. When defining Steno for a question, you'll press F4, and then you'll press Q. Then, as with any other define, you'll press Enter. The Steno has been successfully defined as a question paragraph style. You can see it both in the transcript text and in the reveal codes pane. Let's try that again. I'll press F8 to scan to the next untranslate. Again, there's just one stroke, so there's no need to mark. This is the steno for an answer. Answers can appear in any job and are not case or job specific, so this steno will be dedefined. When this steno is written, I want the formatting for an answer paragraph, so I'll press F4 and then press A. Now I'll press Enter. Once again, the steno has been successfully defined, this time as the answer paragraph style. You can see it both in the transcript text and in the reveal codes pane. Next, let's define a speaker in colloquy. This steno was written whenever Mr. Walsh, one of the attorneys in the proceeding, was speaking in colloquy. This steno is being used for Mr. Walsh for this job only. In other jobs, the same steno might mean a different speaker's name, so I'll j-define this steno. As with a question or answer, we don't just want to define this steno as the words Mr. Walsh followed by a colon, we also want the proper formatting for the text following the speaker name. We know that formatting begins with a format symbol, so I'll press F4. The shortcut key to insert colloquy paragraph style formatting is C. Now I'll type the name in all caps, a colon, and one space. Now, I actually want two spaces after the colon, but here I'm only typing one. Why? Because Case Catalyst always adds one space after every definition to separate what is being defined from the word that follows it. So the space I type after the colon plus the space that Case Catalyst always adds will equal the two spaces I want. Once I press Enter, the steno has been defined as colloquy. Let's do that one more time. I'll press F8 to scan forward. Just one stroke, so no need to mark. This steno represents a speaker by the name of Mr. Collins, but just for this job today. In tomorrow's job, or the next day's, I might use SNOO for a different speaker name. So, I'll press Control j to J-define. I'll press F4, and then C to insert the colloquy format symbol. Type his name in all caps, a colon, and one space. Press Enter, and there we go! The speaker has been defined. You may be wondering how Catalyst knows where to put the Q&A symbols, or how far to indent colloquy, or why the left and right margins are in these specific positions, especially if it looks different in this lesson than it would in one of your own transcripts. 
The information on exactly where each of these items should be is stored in the jobs layout. You'll learn more about setting these values and creating your own unique layouts in the layouts lesson. What's important to know now is that when you use format symbols, especially for paragraph styles such as questions, answers, and colloquy, they look to your jobs layout for instructions on where to indent, what symbols to use, and what the margins will be. Let's define one more type of speaker, the byline paragraph style. There are a number of ways to write the steno for a byline, and a number of ways to format it. In this job, the reporter wrote the steno for a colloquy followed by the steno for a question to indicate that they wanted a byline. This reporter's firm prefers that the formatting appear as the words by Mr. Collins on a new line after the parenthetical interruption, followed by a question paragraph. First, I'll need to position the cursor right before the colloquy and then mark the colloquy and question. Notice that it can be easier to see where the cursor is positioned and what is being marked when you have the reveal codes pane open. Just as with colloquy, the speaker name associated with this steno for a byline will change from job to job, so the best choice for the define type is a jdefine. Next, I'll press F4 and then the letter M, as in margin, to insert the byline format symbol. I know, the shortcut keys up until now were more intuitive. Q is for question, A is for answer, C is for colloquy. So why not B for a byline? Well, the answer is that F4B is used for turning on boldface, so B wasn't available as a shortcut key for bylines. Next, I'll type the word by and a space, the speaker's name in all caps, and a colon. Then, because I want the text following the byline to appear in a question paragraph, I'll finish up by pressing F4, Q, and then press Enter. Let's review what we've learned. Steno for a question should be D-defined as F4, Q, the question format symbol. Steno for an answer should be D-defined as F4, A, the answer format symbol. Steno for colloquy or a byline should be K-defined if the speaker name is case-specific or J-defined if the speaker name is job-specific. Colloquy is defined as F4C, the attorney's name, a colon, and one space. A byline can have many different possible definitions depending on your individual preferred style, but the shortcut key for the byline paragraph style matching the settings in your jobs layout is F4M. You now know how to define questions, answers, colloquy, and bylines. To practice, Go into the training user and follow the directions for exercise number 6 in the edit practice document. When you're ready, proceed to the next lesson in order.